kind of illustrates the most where it's gotten bigger. But you can see if we compare back to June of uh, uh, September of 23 versus now, the eye has gotten pushed out a little bit more um, yeah. and more proptotic over that last period of time since the surgery. The reason why that's important is they did get a lot of it out at surgery, but what it turns out we've learned is that this is likely not a simple low-grade meningioma. This is most likely a faster-growing grade 2 meningioma. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, at least it's acting like it, and some of our data supports that it's not a simple low-grade tumor. Most low-grade meningiomas, like the one they removed from his spine, uh -huh. typically grow on the order of 1 to 2 millimeters a year. So very slow growth over many decades. Typically to grow, so for example, to grow the size that he has in a year usually takes like a decade because you're growing a millimeter a year. To grow 10 millimeters, that would take 10 years. His has grown 10 millimeters in less than a year. So that's much faster than a typical low-grade tumor should be growing. We learned a little bit about that from his original pathology. It did look histologically like a grade one tumor, so like a normal low grade tumor, some of the tumor areas had a growth rate of about 10%, which is much higher than it should be. Okay. Most growth rates of benign tumors should be 5% or less. There are some low grade tumors that will grow faster than that and look like low grade tumors. And then this is where some of the experimental stuff happened with what they did with your tumor tissue at Children's, which was helpful, is uh, and some places like Toronto and the NIH in DC, Washington, D.C. are doing this, we do what's called methylation testing or more detailed genetic testing of the actual tumor. And we try to understand whether it's truly a low-grade tumor or could it be a more high-grade tumor type. And what we learned from that analysis, and this analysis is is for research purposes, but it's helpful to kind of goes along with what we're seeing clinically in his tumor is that it categorized as an intermediate grade, so a grade two tumor, not a grade one tumor, which makes a lot more sense because it's growing like a grade two tumor. A grade three meningioma is considered a malignant cancer. So like something that grows extremely fast and is hard to control. And so it could continue to need multiple courses of radiation or surgery to control. Our hope is, is that if this is a simple grade two tumor, if we get aggressive with radiation, we should be able to control this up to about 80% at five years, okay? Okay. It does still have a relatively high rate of regrowth because of the fact that there's so much tumor left. Does that right. make sense? Yeah. We've talked with a couple of, you know, world's experts in skull-based tumors um, to see could we remove more and would it make sense to remove more? it's not really going to be possible to remove all of it. There's too much tumor in really critical areas that if you try to remove it, you'll cause too much damage to his body. Does that make sense? Yes. So like nerves of the body, blood vessels, would be really risky to try to remove all of it. You could remove some of it. So like the majority of this simple tumor, the majority of the tumor that could be resected has already been resected. But there are components that could be removed, some of the orbit, but not all of it, or tumor to see if we could drop the eye. Um, and then some of this outer part out here can be removed. But the challenge is, is, is that amount of tumor worth removing or not? And there's no right or wrong answer there. We could attempt to remove some of the easier to resect areas to debulk and remove some of the disease away from the eye. The challenge is, is that that's an additional potentially morbid surgery. We delay the radiation further and we do know that the tumor that is left behind will likely keep growing as we wait. And so that's sort of a catch-22. We can try to remove some of it, but the parts that we don't remove will keep growing. And so then we're kind of put back in a similar position three or six months from now if we did a surgery. Does that make sense? And so our consensus initially, both at the children's with their surgeons and with ours, was that it may not make sense to try to do another surgery now. But theoretically, if we do try to radiate everything, if you needed, say, say this temporalis part or part of the orbital component, say in a few years, is changing or growing, then we would try to target smaller parts of the tumor. Does that make sense? Yeah. So surgery can still be done later and probably is better done later 
to try to target areas if we can gain better control of the whole tumor. Does okay. that make sense? Yes. And so that was kind of our strategy was we would treat everything as aggressively as we can and we're going to treat it as though it's a higher grade tumor. Okay. And the reason why that's important is a low grade meningioma gets a lower dose of radiation than an intermediate grade does. So at the moment, we're because of how fast it's grown, like you've seen over the last year, and because of what we've learned from the testing of the DNA, we are going to treat it like it's higher grade. Does that make sense? Yeah. And hopefully, by knowing that information, we'll actually control it better. Because chances are, if we treated it like a low grade tumor, we wouldn't control it very well. We're going to try to push as much of the tumor to that high dose as we can. But there are some areas that we won't and can't, the parts that are along the eye and the optic nerves. That's going to have to drop dose about 10 to 15% to be able to safely treat that area because it's working really well right now. And so because you have good vision now, we're going to have to drop that radiation dose to leave the risk of, of injury to the nerve or to the eye less than 5%, which is kind of what we're shooting for. The risk of injuring the eye, the retina, or the optic area or nerve that travels, the vision information travels, should be 5% or less with the radiation strategy that we're going to use. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. But it's one of those catch-22s that if we don't treat, we know it will eventually be injured. If we do treat, we want to try to push it as best we can because if we do too much underdosing, then the tumor will just keep growing, if that makes sense. So yeah. we're trying to find that gray, that sort of fine line of push the tumor dose as aggressive as we can get, okay. but don't harm anything. And so we're going to try to find that balance for you, okay? Mm-hmm. The one thing I do worry about long term is because, you, like I showed you, there's tumor kind of where the lacrimal gland or the gland that secretes um, um, and keeps the eye moist. I worry that we're probably, because we're going to have to treat the tumor there, that'll probably be lost. He's going to have to continue to follow with an eye doctor with our team at Children's long term and forever because I worry that there's a high risk for developing dry eye syndrome, which can lead to like. Um, if it gets really dry, you can lead to like damage to the actual eye itself, like the cornea of the eye. Because okay. that acts as a natural barrier to things and debris in the air. And so things in the air or just air itself can dry it out and injure the eye. And so we have to be really cognizant. He might have to use drops and things like that or a mixture of drops for the rest of his life because of the dryness that can develop from the treatment. So that's like a critical thing we have to kind of plan about first. I think one of the other things that I'd want you to, you know, understand that is possible is that it, you may end up having, and this happens to some people with NF that have tumors in their eye, um, near their eye, is it may be, it may be over the next ten years you will have to adjust to just having better vision in your good eye, um, and the left eye may slowly decline or worsen from the therapy itself to the point where you'll be focusing mostly with the right eye. Okay, And so that's why I wanted to point out there is some tumor starting to go over to the other side. Our also high goal for us is to preserve the good eye from the tumor as best as possible. So he'll always hopefully have really good vision in the right, and even if the left kind of goes over top. Okay? Okay. Any other questions that you guys have for me? Um, Dr. Saloon. The oncologist said that sometimes radiation doesn't work for NF2. Is that true? For some of these tumors, um, yes, there is a there is a risk of about twenty percent that it won't control the tumor at about five years. Um, then we would have to use other means. There are things like more surgery experimental options that we talked about, some chemotherapies are being developed right now that could potentially be an option a few years from now. There's um, injectable radiation called Ludothera that can also be an option for him down the road um, because that trial will be open at Children's that Dr. Saloom and I run for people that have his type of tumor. That's considered experimental. We still think radiation and surgery are the most appropriate tools here. But things like that, we could use as strategies for salvage should we not be effective. It is possible that we get really aggressive and it's not, it does not work. That is possible. But I think that the majority of time it does. So like I have people with NF2, like germline NF2 proven, 
that I've treated a very similar situation 